If you were offered a last meal request, what would it be? For some, these inmates, you see, there will be nothing out of the ordinary. For some, a bit odd. And then there are others that are over the top. Speaking of over the top, let's talk about Lawrence Russell Brewer. Now, Brewer's request actually led to the abolishing of the last meal request in Texas in 2011. Why? Well, it is because Brewer requested two chicken fried steaks smothered in gravy with sliced onions, a triple meat bacon cheeseburger with the fixings on the side, a cheese omelet with ground beef, tomatoes, onions, bell peppers, and jalapenos, a large bowl of fried okra with ketchup, one pound of barbecue with a half a loaf of white bread, three fajitas with the fixings, a meat lover's pizza, three root beers, and one pint of bluebell vanilla ice cream. Oh, and a slab of peanut butter fudge with crushed peanuts. They actually granted Brewer's request, but he refused the meal when it arrived, saying he was simply not hungry. Well, of course, this did not go over well, and they abolished the last meal request in Texas in 2011. Now, a more interesting one comes from Iowa. It is Victor Figger. Now, Victor was hanged for kidnapping and unaliving. But his last meal request kind of goes down in history. It's one of the odd ones I was talking about. He requested a single olive with the pit still in it. He told the guards he hoped an olive tree would sprout from his grave as a sign of peace. Think about that. The only thing that I think that may would stop that would be maybe the casket but i guess it would rot or they would break open maybe maybe a tree could sprout i don't know but such an odd request with a deep meaning then we'll look at a few more infamous people so first on our list is john wayne gacy if you have found this channel i am sure you know who john wayne gacy was and he was sentenced to death for R, S, A, and 33 counts of unaliving. Now for his last meal, he requested 12 fried shrimp, a bucket of original recipe Kentucky Fried Chicken, French fries, and a pound of strawberries. Now prior to his convictions, he managed three Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurants. It is also said that strawberries were his dad's favorite. Maybe a little bit of comfort food and then, you know, going back maybe into the child's mindset of pleasing dad or maybe he just likes strawberries. I don't know. What do you think? Or how about this peach of humanity? Comes to us from Indiana. Timothy McVeigh, who absolutely needs no introduction, but he is listed as an American terrorist who was behind the Oklahoma City bombing. And we all know that this unalived 168 men, women, and children. Now, Timothy was put to death by lethal injection. And for his last meal request, he requested two pints of mint chocolate chip ice cream. So was this just something that he did not get to have while he was on death row and he just wanted mint chocolate chip ice cream? Is this kind of a, oh, I do what I want because I'm going to have dessert for my meal. And I'm not making this stuff up as far as like the psychology behind it. I've read and people actually think, you know, when they do the candy or the dessert for their dinner, they're going back to a child's mindset. I've read this. So what do you think? Now this next one comes to us from Arkansas. Now when I first read it, I thought, okay, this is a little funny. And in a way it is, 
But as I continued reading, um, the inmate had a mental condition. So I, I kind of take the comedy out of it, but it's still funny to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so we have Ricky Ray Richter. Now, Ricky ordered steak, fried chicken, cherry Kool-Aid, and pecan pie. He didn't eat the pecan pie. He told the guard that he was saving it for later. Now, when I read that about his mental condition, I thought, okay, does he realize the gravity of what's happening here? Was it a joke? Did he try a bite of it and really didn't like it? I just wonder what he meant by it. I don't know. And the next one is another that ha needs absolutely no introduction. Mr. Ted Bundy. Now, of course, Bundy is one of America's most notorious serial killers. He was sentenced to death for RSAing, necrophilia, prison escape, and more than 33 counts of unaliving. He requested nothing he declined his last meal request and he was served the traditional last meal which was steak cooked medium rare eggs over easy hash browns toast with butter and jelly milk and juice i don't know i kind of find that one a bit strange myself because ted bundy is one of those people that have to be in control of the situation it's just their personality. You would think that he would go out big. But maybe that was another thought process behind it. Maybe everybody thought he would order this or, or some oddball thing, but actually requested nothing. And then there's Eileen Warnocks. It was put to death by lethal injection in 2002. She was convicted of unaliving at least seven men. She too declined a last meal, but she opted for a cup of black coffee. She did offer a, a last statement though, which was, yes, I would just like to say I'm sailing with the rock and I'll be back like Independence Day with Jesus. Studying Eileen, I wouldn't expect anything less from her quite honestly. So what got me into this rabbit hole was I was suggested a video on YouTube featuring death row chef Brian Price. He spoke about his prison stay, how he became the death row chef, and he wrote a book called Meals to Die For. I will link the video and the Amazon link to his book in the description below. Well, what do you think? Is this an interesting topic? Would you like me to dive into more last meals? I don't know. Let me know what you think. I mean, if it wasn't interesting, it wasn't interesting. I found it interesting and thought I would share. So, okay, here is your number two question. Do you believe in capital punishment? Why or why not? Please, as always, be respectful in the comments. And I hope you all have an amazing day. I'll see you on the next one.